More Olive Island Lighthouse action, and while coming back from Buenas, my Alakazam tried to learn Future Sight. Of course, I stopped it from learning it because, I mean, come on! 80 power, 90 accuracy, that's right! It hits 3 turns later, and then there's the fact that it can miss 10% of the time. That is not my idea of fun. It doesn't get stabbed, it cannot score super effective, the good news is that it can't be resisted either, but that is still crap! What were they thinking? Even Doom Desire, which has a lot more power, just doesn't cut it. It's one of the worst signature moves and for good reason, so imagine how Future Sight holds up! Okay, okay, so I imagine a Future Sight rant isn't exactly what you expected when you clicked the link to see the video. Nah, what you expected is my two cents on the latest Coro Coro news, because yeah, the last batch of information on Hard Gold and Soul Silver prior to the game's release came out today, and first we'll begin with the Did anyone really think this wouldn't come back department? And in that department, both the bug catching contest and the mystery egg uh, side quest involving Togepi, they both return in Hard Gold and Soul Silver. Now I'm curious as to what formula will be used in the bug catching contest. If you've seen my tutorial about it, then you know what I'm talking about because the IV system changed a lot since uh, Gold Silver Crystal, so they might change the formula. So expect scores of over 400 to become possible if they can't, if they keep the same general idea. So what? Five Pidgeys? Are you kidding me? This is almost as boring as a team full of magic cards. Well, scratch that. This is more boring because you see Pidgeys a lot more often than you see magic cards. Magic cards are weaker, but Pidgeys are more boring. So there. But back to the news. The Rayquaza that requires a Kyogre from Hard Gold and a Groudon from Soul Silver to obtain is going to be at level 50. Now. It's 20 levels lower than in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, so now it's possible to have a Rayquaza that's lower than level 70. And if it weren't Uber, it would make, um, well, a very small difference in the because of the fact that it would be eligible for Nintendo tournaments, because right now Tyranitar isn't, because, of course, there's the whole no-level equalizer thing in official Nintendo tournaments, and I'm not going to rant about it again because I did that enough times already, but you know as much as I do that it's bullshit. But it's an uber, so it's a moot point anyway. Next, remember the Battle Tower in Crystal? Well, I hope you do because we visited it just a few videos ago, so I definitely hope you remember it. Well, there's going to be a full battlefront here at that spot. Now, no details have been confirmed, however, it's safe to assume that uh, the Battle Tower will be there as well. Will it be in the exact same format as it was in Crystal, or will it follow the format of more recent games, or maybe not? Why have both in two different uh, buildings, for example? It could be doable, but both are pretty similar anyway. So, yeah, there are no details for the moment, I guess we'll have to wait until release to find out. The mysterious area west of Cyanwood has been confirmed to be a safari zone. Now I am very surprised at this development because, as with everyone else, I expected a safari zone, if there was one, to be in Fuchsia, not uh, near Cyanwood. I expected that to be the Pile Park of sort. Uh huh. I mean to bring her back with me? Nobody had better get in my way. What? Does she consider Jasmine as some sort of trophy or something? Or oh, wait, 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 wait a second. She's got to be Jasmine's crazy lesbian stalker. I can think of no other reason why she would say that kind of thing. That was most definitely creepy. And that girl here is a rather important landmark and You'll see why soon, but I'll explain it to you right away. You, because, as you probably noticed, there's a hole next to her. Now, you've probably noticed the series of hole in the eastern areas of each floor. That is simply a shortcut to go down the, the, the tower easily. 
but I'm going to continue to go up the tower and eventually I'll reach a dead end. So here I'm going to need to backtrack to this point and fall down this hole, this hole, this hole. I can there's a whore and a hole on the same screen, so excuse me for the for the mistake. So you gotta fall down that hole here if you want to meet Jasmine, and then you'll get out by the series of shortcuts. So back to the Safari Zone thing, as I said, I expected Safari Zone to pop up in Fuchsia, so quite frankly this is very, very bad news for those who wanted a Kanto revamp. You know, I was, I've been talking about it a lot, uh, the possibility of a Kanto revamp, because it just wasn't quite up to par compared to the previous incarnation in red, blue, and yellow. So, yeah, there's gonna be no Safari Zone in Kanto, well, unless they replace the Safari Zone in Fuchsia with a uh, PAL Park of sorts, because, well, maybe they could do that, but there's speculation that they might not even include a PAL Park or any other means to transfer your Generation 3 Pokémon to Heart Gold and Soul Silver, because the thing is they want to push the DSi, and the DSi has no Game Boy Advance slot. But to deny the DS and DS Lite owners of their capability to transfer Generation 3 Pokémon into their Generation 4 cartridges, I think that's a bit cheap. I mean, do they want us to have both a DS Lite and a DSi? Well, on second thought, this is the company that is luring us to buy both Hard Gold and Soul Silver by using a Rayquaza to do it. And then there's the fact that you get some bonuses if you buy multiple versions of Mystery Dungeon WiiWare, so I wouldn't put it past them, actually. That's a pretty sleazy strategy, but it works, and they're, they're there to make money. They're, I'm not even going to try and run away from that fact. The more money they make, the more happy they are. But back to the Safari Zone, not bringing it back in Kanto means there might be no Viridian Forest, no Seafoam Islands, only the fight with Blaine, no Cerulean Cave, the roads will stay much shorter than they were in Red, Blue and Yellow and Fire Red and Leaf Green, and this quite possibly means they will pass up on the only opportunity they will ever have at making things right and that pisses me off. And now for the final news item of the day, the Apricorn and their corresponding balls will in fact come back in Hard Gold and Soul Silver, and you'll be able to grow them using a pot that you keep with you, that's the basic concept. I don't really understand how it's going to work, but you can carry it with you and you don't have to go all over the place to collect your Apricorns. Now, I sincerely hope that you're going to be able to bring an entire truck worth of Apricorns to Kurt, and you'll be able to get them all in one day. I, at least I'm hoping so, and I'm also hoping that the Generation 3 and 4 balls will come back as well, because, like it or not, they were vastly superior to the Generation 2 balls. After all, who didn't abuse the Dusk balls to catch all the legendaries in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. And I'm, of course, expecting the balls, if a Pokémon is holding them, then you can't trade them to Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, because they aren't recognized in the game code in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Kind of like the same thing with the Grizzius Orb in Diamond and Pearl. Okay, is there anyone else? Nope, there's only a rare candy here, so I am going to head down the hole, and after that I'm going to fall down that hole next to the creepy lesbian stalker, but I'm going to do this next time.